Hello everybody, my name is Natalia Lee and I'm the author of the young adult novels Highborn and Wave Spears and today I am bringing you a super exciting video because it is a collaboration with the lovely Mandy Lynn and we're going to be sharing our steps toward self-publication, our what to plan when self-publishing. So let's get started. <laughs> So I'm going to be sharing part one. There are going to be two parts to this collaboration. No. This is Tifa. You have seen him in other videos. He is my boyfriend's beautiful, beautiful cat. So we have two, Mew and Tifa. And Tifa is being very chatty today, not wanting to hang out. Okay, Tifa. Okay, talkative, Tifa. So there are going to be two parts to this collaboration. I am doing part one, which is going to be mostly based off of kind of what you do to get your book ready for self-publication. And then Mandy's part uh, of the collaboration is going to be how to get that book into readers' hands. So more of the marketing side and aspect of things. She has done some amazing work for her novels, Essence and I Am Mercy. She has arranged blog tours. She has book trailers. There is just so much amazing information that she is going to be able to share in her video. So after you watch this one, which is part one, make sure to go and check her video out, part two, which will be linked down below. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is editing. So if you are self-publishing, there are some different avenues that you can take here and that you need to really research and think about before diving into any of them. So number one is always going to be self-edit. After you finish your novel, let it sit for a month or so until you feel like your brain is clear and you can come back to it with fresh eyes and do a self-edit. This for me is always a developmental edit, which means plot, story structure, pacing, character arcs. This is like the real meat and like bones of the story. It's the foundation, it's the skeleton, right? And now when you're done with that self-edit, this is the point where you have to start doing your research. My recommendation would be to get yourself beta readers and get more than you think you'll need. Because if some of them drop out, you're still going to have you know, those five that you knew that you needed. So definitely get yourself some beta readers and I will be doing a video all about the beta reader process once I am finished with my beta process. But definitely get yourself some beta readers. After you have beta reader feedback, you're gonna do another round of edits. And this is where it gets really tricky because, oh my gosh, guys, a lot of people will tell you, many people will tell you that you need to find yourself a professional editor. And I think a professional editor is a fantastic idea. They are a professional editor for a reason. They can definitely help you. But not all of us have thousands of dollars to spend on a book that might make $500, right? So if you are somebody that does have the money to pay a professional editor, then I would highly recommend going ahead and getting either a developmental editor or a copy editor or both. But if you are somebody that does not have a bunch of money to spend, maybe you're a young writer and your parents aren't going to pay for a professional editor for you, or maybe you're working through college and you can barely pay for a cup of noodles, let alone a $5,000 edit, then what do you do? And my recommendation is to get a second round of beta readers, do the whole thing again. Because beta readers, readers, people that are reading your novel for the entertainment aspect will be really good at helping you figure out the meat and bones of the story. They'll tell you where they're confused, they'll tell you what characters they love, what scenes were awkward or that they didn't really enjoy, and you'll be able to really strengthen the novel based on that alone. You know, after you get that feedback, self-edit it again with their feedback, and then depending on how you are at like grammar and spelling and mechanics and such, I would recommend potentially getting like a critique partner or somebody that's really good at grammar type stuff that can help you with that, or just doing as much research as you can to teach yourself how to use that semicolon, how to use the hyphen correctly, how to, you know, quote a quote within dialogue, like random, you know, small detail oriented stuff like that that readers will pick up on. 
do your research and make sure you're doing it to the best of your ability. Okay, so step two that I'm going to cover is your interior formatting. And this can be a lot of fun, but it can also be really infuriating to people because when I was first learning how to format the interior of my novel, I had it figured out on like a basic level in Word. You know, chapter heading, move down the page with, um, you know, indentation on every paragraph and making sure there was like a page break before the next chapter and all that like nitty gritty stuff. Once I figured that out and I uploaded it to Create Space, I figured out that the margins were all wrong and the gutter was wrong and the bleed was wrong and everything was incorrect and it was just maddening trying to figure out how to do the interior formatting. I did teach myself. I'm excited to say that I feel rather confident in my interior formatting skills because I have struggled so much and have taught myself so much through my research and just trying and failing and trying and failing and learning how to do it. So that is definitely one option. Just try and fail, learn how to do it yourself, and you will get there. A second option is to use a template. And I actually have not used an interior formatting template, but I know that Kristen Martin uses templates for her novels. She actually writes in them, is what she has said in some of her videos. So I highly recommend contacting her if you want more information about how to actually get a hold of those templates. I have not used them, but I know it's an option and you can actually just write in those templates in Word or your writing program so that when you're finished with your novel, it's already formatted for you and you don't have to worry about it. The third option is to actually pay an interior designer. Now, I know that Create Space has an option for this and I'll talk about Create Space here in just a bit, but you can pay somebody to actually properly and professionally format your interior pages, not only for your paperback or hardcover, but also for your ebook. Um, and ebook formatting, slash, you know, ebook formatting is different from paperback formatting, so there is a lot to learn here. But if you are somebody that really wants a professional job well done, you can absolutely hire people to do your interior formatting for you. All right, step number three is one that I'm really excited to talk about, and that is cover design. Now, if you are going to pay for anything, I would probably say to pay for the cover because you can get you know, a hundred beta readers that will really help you tighten your plot and really get everything working and the entertainment value is just skyrocketing. But when it comes to a cover, a cover design, you want something that is going to really snag readers' attention and pull them in so that they want to read your book. But if you are not somebody that has background in photo manipulation or traditional media or you know, whatever type cover you want to have. Like I've seen gorgeous uh, book covers that were traditional media like watercolor or charcoal and they're beautiful. So once you have a better idea of what type of cover image you want, then you have to decide how you're going to get that cover. So if you're going to pay for anything, I recommend paying a cover designer to design a gorgeous, beautiful cover for you. The cover is super important, my friends. You want to be able to get the aspects right. You don't want, you know, the spine to be a little too wide and then to bleed over onto the cover image or onto the back cover. So this is something that you want to make sure is well done and probably professionally done. Number four that I'm going to talk about is publishing. How are you going to publish? What avenues are you going to take to self-publishing your novel? I chose Create Space and I adore it. It is so easy to use. You can upload your book to it and then it takes up to 24 hours for them to actually like check over it. And then after that 24 hours is complete and they've done that initial check, they'll let you know if the, you know, maybe the gutters are wrong or they'll let you know if you have blank pages or if your text is not turning out right. Like they'll flag all these warnings so then you can go back through fix all of those problems, re-upload, they'll look at it again. It's just really user-friendly. You can really take your time with it and I absolutely love it. It's also, it's also free to use. You don't have to pay to upload your book to Create Space. They assign you an ISBN so you don't have to go and buy a bunch of ISBN numbers for your book. Now, if you want to use Ingram Spark, this is something completely different. I also have heard that you have to pay something like $40 
every time you upload something new to Ingram Spark. So let's say you upload your novel and then you realize that the formatting is all messed up. You're gonna have to pay 40 bucks again to re-upload it. So if you're going with Ingram Spark, which Ingram Spark is awesome, they have a lot of distribution options for you. So there's definitely pros and cons to this. But if you want to upload through Ingram Spark, you want to make sure that you're not going to have to pay like 160 bucks because you've had to re-upload your interior pages so many times. So because of that, I really enjoy CreateSpace. They're user-friendly, they're very forgiving if you make errors, and it's just so easy to use. So that would definitely be my go-to for self-publication, but there are other options out there. And I'm going to keep coming back to this, and that is that you need to do your research for self-publishing. Don't just write a novel, slap a PowerPoint photo on it, and send it off into the world. That's not going to bring in the attention and the readers that you're looking for. You want to bring in the exact audience you're writing for, you want them to love and adore and cherish your book and give it five-star reviews on Amazon and Goodreads. So I hope this was helpful to you. I had a bit of coffee before this, so I feel like I'm kind of bouncing off the walls and excited today. Uh, but I do really hope that you enjoyed this video and then you go and watch Mandy's video. I am extremely excited to see what she comes up with. I personally have never created a book trailer. I have thought about it in the past and I tried to create a book trailer for Way of Spears, but it was such a hot mess that I just nixed that whole thing really early on because it was an embarrassment. But I'm really excited to hear everything that she has to say. She's been self-publishing for a long time. She has just worked so hard to get her novels out there, and I'm so excited to have this opportunity to not only collaborate with her, but also to learn a lot more in the process. So. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Go check out Mandy's video. It will be linked down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye.